What's happening, everybody? It's time for another Talking with Topher, episode 215. Let's get into it. everybody i'm gonna get started the way i always do by thanking all of you that's right all my subscribers thank you so much and of course if you're new to the podcast stopping by checking it out you gotta hit that subscribe button that's what helps the channel grow and keeps me coming back week after week of course if you want your opportunity to be a guest get some merch or tell your story you gotta use the official email of the podcast t-a-l-k-i-n with Topher at gmail.com you know how to do it And of course, don't forget about the link tree. It's in the description below the video. So go there, click it, and find everything TWT, subscribe, and follow. All right, with that all out of the way, this is Eggbert. I eat so many eggs, and my wife got me this little egg dude, and uh, his name is Eggbert. He's hanging out with me now. Uh, keeping me company so I don't feel like I'm always talking to myself. I finally got the brown belt certificate. It It's awesome. It feels so good. Uh, everything takes time, and now I just got to find some more things to fill the wall. But a couple of things I wanted to touch on today was, uh, you know, everything is so, so crazy today. It's so crazy. But a lot of this stuff makes sense. Now, I don't know if anybody else listens to... Um, this podcast, but I have been deep diving in, and I'm not saying that they know everything. I'm just saying that this is certain podcast that deals in theories, and I like it a lot. It's A M P L E X. So if you've heard of it, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't heard of it, now you have. Um, go and check them out on YouTube, but they have a lot of stuff that they dig into. And I was listening to one of the interviews this morning and what the guy said is not really that far fetched. So there is, um, a lot of these cities and stuff that they're digging up right now, and I can't name them or place them, but they're showing inconsistencies with our actual timeline they're saying that we have been around for 5,000 years and that's it but yet they dig into this and they find another 5,000 years and then they dig into another area and they find another 5,000 years and then they dug into this third area and now we've dated back 20,000 years completely breaking the Smithsonian's uh, uh, founding of data, I guess you could say. Um, and so as of right now, I don't know if anybody else knows this, but in the Grand Canyon, there is 335 tunnels that have been found out of the supposed 2,000 that exist within the Grand Canyon. Um, there is about five or six of those that have been labeled, uh, you know, no public. Uh, For safety reasons, they did name the five or six. I don't remember them, but there's five or six uh, tunnels that nobody can go into because they are super dangerous. So there out of the 335, there are only two that people are allowed to go to. Um, So then you take another six and now you have a total of eight tunnels. So that leaves you three hundred and twenty five tunnels out of supposed 2,000 that you cannot go into. Now, why can't you go into these tunnels? They say it's because they don't want people to destroy the artifacts that are inside of these tunnels. But the problem with these artifacts that are inside of these tunnels, supposedly, they date back further than the Smithsonian says that they do. So these things are showing signs of people being in that area before the Native Americans, before 
we ever came here. So the Native Americans weren't the original ones. And the reason that I bring this up is because when you go to these other tunnels that are unmarked or not for tourists, some of them, you go to them and all of a sudden a Black Hawk helicopter comes flying overhead telling you to get out of here, get away from this. Why? Why don't you want us to find out whether or not this land was inhabited before the Native Americans? Well, that breaks all of their history, everything they've ever written, everything that's been distributed to schools, everything we learn in the classroom. It literally blows everything up. And the Smithsonian can't have that happening because they are run, I believe, by the government. The government doesn't want you to know that we're older than we are because then you might question what, what, what's really going on today, right? Because the artifacts and what they're finding, I mean, they found a pyramid that is bigger than the pyramid of Giza. Giza. That's crazy. And, they, and, the, and where it's located, there's no signs of how to get to move those amount of rocks in that area. So you're looking at this, and I'm reading about it, and I'm listening to it, and I'm like, oh, my God. This is everything we know today seems to be a lie. Or everything we know today has been, the truth has been bent, right? The truth is bent in a way that works for them. For some reason, they wanted Columbus to discover America. They wanted this. They wanted that. None of that is true. Columbus didn't even find America. He didn't even find it. He never landed here. So, <laughs> so when you have caves inside of the Grand Canyon where you go to it and a black hawk comes over and tells you to get off of there, get out of there. There's something more than just them protecting artifacts. If you're protecting artifacts, get them the fuck out of the tunnel and put them in a museum where they belong. You can do it. We watch you guys do it all the time. You move precious art and old artifacts all the time. You can definitely do it with these. You're hiding something from us. Now, they were also talking about these ancient civilizations being more advanced than the civilizations that came up after. So they're thinking that the people that were in these caves were around before the Native Americans. And if that is true, that means they were far superior to where we are today and then the ice age happened and it killed them and then the native americans showed up and then everything else happened so technically even as advanced as we are today we're not as advanced as they were twenty thousand years ago now here's where it gets really fun the people that were here twenty thousand years ago what if they were originated, what if we originated on Mars? Now, don't stick with me here. Stay with me. This is fun. What if we are the aliens to this planet? We were all on Mars. Not, now, by we, I don't mean me. I just mean, so these past people, right? Because I don't know words. And so they were, what if they were, living on Mars, they killed the planet, right? And then they s somehow left that planet and then came to this one, and they found out that they could inhabit this planet. So they brought all their technology from Mars, a planet that they killed, came down here, did all of this stuff. The Ice Age happened, killed them all, right? Because they're like, man, we can't get away from the planet trying to kill us. <laughs> and... Then we are all here now. But we are the aliens who originated from Mars coming down into this planet 
taking it over, and then we're trying to go back to Mars. Because in our DNA somewhere, that's really our home. That's why we're so infatuated with it, and that's why we want to go back so badly. Now, Mars is a fun category as well, because Mars, technically, I guess, according to some of the pictures and the uh, writing that I've read, supposedly, Mars is in Canada. So, there's a place in Canada where, if you zoom in on it, it shows the space like station thing that's sitting on Mars, it shows the rover driving around, and it's right on Earth. Could all of our footage from Mars be a Hollywood hoax again? And it's actually being done out of Canada. I don't know. Are we aliens from Mars who, who, in, who came down to this planet and... And, and this is where we stayed because it was habitable because we killed Mars. And deep down inside, we want to go back home. Are those caves full of artifacts that they need to protect? Or are they hiding more from us? It's so interesting to me how all of these things, when we start looking into it more and more, they don't want us to know. They don't want us to know. But I want you to think about it because I thought it was crazy and it seems kind of plausible because of the simple fact that we want to go to Mars so bad. And it's like the moon is like a skipping stone in between the two. So if we we can make it to the moon, right? We can make it back to Mars? Or is Mars a shorter distance from the... I don't even know. Uh, Why would Mars be a shorter distance than our moon, right? You would figure the moon is halfway between Mars and us, and then, you know, we could use it like a skipping stone. But we can't get back to the moon anyways because we were never there. So, I mean, it's it's wild to think about. It's a little far-fetched, maybe a little out in left field. But do you really believe the Smithsonian and what they tell us to be true? Do you really believe we've only been on this planet for 5,000 years? I don't. I really don't. I think there's way more to this than they're ever going to allow us to know, which is why we got to do this shit all ourselves. But I really, really found it very interesting uh, how all these things tied together. Um, On that note, we're going to take a quick break so you can hear from my sponsor. This May, Slow Down Clothing is your one-stop shop for all the latest tattoo-inspired styles. At slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com, we offer a wide range of products to keep you stylish all year round. And here's the best part. When you use the promo code T-O-P-H-E-R at checkout, you'll get an extra 10% off your entire purchase. That's right. You can save big while adding some fabulous pieces to your wardrobe. Our collection is always expanding with fresh new styles. So you'll never run out of options to express your style. Looking for unique t-shirts that make a statement? We've got you covered with our tattooed inspired designs. And don't forget, we also have a great selection of kids clothes for the little ones, along with the skateboard gear for all the skaters out there. Ladies, we've got you covered too. Check out our trendy leggings that will elevate your everyday look. And for all the seasons out there, we have something for all of them. That's right. Whether you need a cozy winter wear, fresh spring styles, or breezy summer outfit, Slow Down Clothing has it all. So don't miss out on the chance to elevate your wardrobe with Slow Down Clothing. Visit slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com today. And don't forget to use... The promo code T-O-P-H-E-R for that exclusive 10% discount off your entire purchase. Slow down, shop smart, and stay stylish with Slow Down Clothing. All right, everybody, what's happening? I'm back after that quick break. Now it is time for Topher's Topic. All right, so right now what's going on is uh, the variants are back, everybody. Yay. Did Did you miss them? 
I thought they were gone forever. I thought we were done with this bullshit. But here's the new one. And are you ready for its name? COVID-19. What to know about the new variants? What are the symptoms of flirt? Hold on. I want you to see my face. <laughs> what? You call the new variant flirt? Who's it flirting with? <laughs> this is so fucking retarded. I do not care. This is so, so retarded. Um, we're just making shit up now. So this new variant um, sparking concerns about a potential flare-up of the virus over the summer months. The family of variants called FLIRT include KP2, which is now the dominant variant in the United States, according to the center, this CDC. Yeah, well, we all believe them, don't we? No. The variants are part of the Omicron family, which was not a severe um, COVID in the first place. And based on technical names for the mutations, one of them includes the letters F and L, and another of which includes R and T. So we're calling it FLIRT. Oh, it can be more contagious than previous variants. Oh, no, you're going to get a cold. Um, it's still the early days. Oh, no. I mean, what do we got to do? Get 15 more boosters? 97% of people have natural vaccine-induced antibodies. Yeah, because almost everybody's had COVID except for me. Um, let's see. What are the symptoms? Symptoms. Oh, hey, look. I bet you this is going to sound like a common cold. Uh, sore throat, cough, fatigue, congestion, runny nose, headache, muscle aches, fevers or chills, new loss of sense of taste or smell, shortness of breath or difficulty breathing, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Hey, you know what this sounds like? Every prescription drug out there. Oh, what else does this sound like? <gasps> the common cold. Oh, wait a minute. What else does this sound like? I mean, every single virus on the planet can do any one of these symptoms so wow you really narrowed it down for me guys i've got this under control i'm gonna get three more shots 72 more boosters and i should be good right oh wait i've never caught covid oh wait i only get sick once a year oh wait i have a really good working immune system oh you mean none of this means shit to me oh weird weird now if you have comorbidities I'm sorry. It's a simple fact that they are trying to make us worry about something that we don't have to worry about anymore. I think it's going to be fine. These variants are coming off of a variant that was a very weak variant in the first place. Are you going to get sick? Yes. At the end of the day, the best thing for you to do is get like large amounts of Vitamin C, get, have the proper, I don't know, cough medicine and stuff. Take care of your body, eat healthier, uh, go for a walk, do some exercise, do things that build up your immune system. So whenever somebody's sick, I'm like, cool, let me see if I can get sick from you. Tyler was over at my house the other day. He recently got sick, something about a norovirus, which is just a stomach bug, but it norovirus sounds way cooler right and he was like i still think i have some symptoms i'm like cool cool let me see if i can get sick no no so i think i'm on the never get sick end which is not good right and he's on the always sick end which is not good and we both need to be in the middle we need to be getting sick every now and then but this is stupid and the, the this new variant that's out here I'm telling you right now, this is just a scare tactic, everybody. It's just a scare tactic. Um, so what is going on with Boeing, everybody? Whistleblower speaks out on quality issues at Boeing Supplier. It was just a matter of time before something bad happened. I mean, this is absolutely insane. Uh, this guy is dead now, by the way. Uh, yeah, he was 45, healthy, and now he died second one everybody now supposedly there might be a third one which i haven't heard of yet 
but I was informed that there's possible three whistleblowers from Boeing now that are no longer on this planet. And there was nothing wrong with them, and they shouldn't have just died. I think what's happening is Boeing has not been doing what they said they were doing. They have not been do- following the protocols. They have not been doing the safety measures. And now these people are speaking up against them. And this company is whacking people. Look, I know that I don't take a lot of the conspiracy theories very seriously. This is not a conspiracy. This is happening real time, real right now. And we're all just sitting back watching it. And nobody is going to look into any of these deaths that are just now happening as these people speak out against this corporation. Why? Why are we not digging into this more? Why are they not outside of that place with cruisers and people to search and tear down that place? Because I'm sorry, if you have people that are, fi- that are, that are speaking against you, And then all of a sudden they just die. And everybody knows it. It's not like it's a secret. How is it that authorities are not doing something about this? How are they not looking into it? How are they not flipping every single rock to find out how these healthy people are just winding up dead one day, right? Was it one day? I think the first guy was one day before the the actual hearing or a court date and then this guy spoke up when the other guy died and now he's dead you don't think that's linked you don't think there's something going on there i think this company is super super dirty they're doing something really really wrong and it puts all of our lives in jeopardy i don't go flying that often right I don't get on a plane too often. I haven't been on a plane in a long time, actually. But if I was to go flying, and they said that your flight's right there, and that's a Boeing jet, I think I'm going to think a couple more times or twice. I'm going to think twice before I get on that plane. Something's going on. They're not doing something right. And whatever these people are trying to get out, to let us all know what is going on behind the scenes of that company, well, it's getting them killed. So if you don't think that that is very serious or a problem, uh, I think it is. I think it's a very, very serious problem that we are seeing right in front of our face and nobody's doing anything. So this woman, (laughs) this is crazy. And I think it's, it, it just goes to show you where we're at today. All right. Now, This woman found living in a store sign with computer coffee maker, and she lived there for around a year. Police in Michigan say a woman spent nearly a year living inside a sign above a grocery store. And officers say the woman set up quite a living space up there. Officers found the woman right living up there. inside the rooftop sign <laughs> last month. They asked the woman to leave the area. The Detroit Free Press reports the 34-year-old had set up flooring, a desk, a computer, a printer, and a coffee machine inside that area. Contractors worked on the roof and noticed an extension cord coming out a door and realized someone was living there. The woman is not facing charges. Oh, my God, dude. That's so wild. That is so wild. So what are they charging her with? Trespassing? Setting up an illegal dwelling? She had an extension. Where was that extension cord going? And wherever it was going, how did somebody not see it plugged in? I mean, she actually put down flooring. (laughs) And was just living up there. But this goes to show you, no one can afford their rent today. No one can afford a place to live. Even, you know, anybody. Anybody today. It's just a real hard time. I I was just talking to somebody today, and they're like, I'm trying to buy a house. And I'm like, whoo. Good luck to you. Good luck to you is the only advice I have because... It's not a buyer's game, and it's not a seller's game out there. It is a no-man's game. The only people that are winning are BlackRock. 
Um, but it's just like, isn't that a, isn't this a complete and absolute sign that nobody can afford to do the simplest things in life, which are supposed to be putting a roof over your head and putting food on a table. Those are the two most important things and the two things that everybody wants to do today. And now you have to go live above the family dollar in order to accomplish any of it, which is just so disgusting to me. But it just goes to show you that this is where we're at. She probably can't afford $1,800 a month for a studio. How are we ever going to be able to do what's needed to be done to have the American dream if everything is out of reach now? You know, I, I just, I get upset because, again, they don't help us. They help everybody else. And then they allow people to cross over. They give them a license. They give them a T-shirt. They give them a blue sticker. Um, they give them a car, a place to live. What? But yet we have people here that now living above the family dollar just to have a roof over the head. <laughs> There's something wrong with this. There's something really, really wrong with it. But, man, I couldn't believe she was living above the family dollar. So, Las, Ali Las Vegas alien video is original, experts say. Now, I'm really hoping that the video's in here. Every plus is UFO witness, and Scott Roeder is an internationally recognized evidence specialist and founder of the Evidence Room. Great to have you both here. Scott, I'll start with you. You've analyzed the video uh, in Las Vegas in that backyard edited fake what's your take on it uh no there's no editing that is an original video we did a complete analysis of it and we tried to debunk it to to see if there was something that was added to the video we used a uh, vector so uh, vector tracking uh software uh that has an ai component to it and all of our results came back as it was authentic so there's something in that video there's two things actually in that video, there's something that happens in the background, which uh, I found initially, and I didn't even see uh, or recognize the being or whatever it is uh, above the fence until just a few weeks ago. Uh, it was pointed out to me by a subscriber to a friend of mine's podcast. But once you see it, you can't deny it. Uh, so there's actually two uh, beings in the video at the same time, one in the background, that I believe that the father is reacting to. And you can see it for just a split second when their heads separate. And at yeah. that same time, that's when the being or whatever it is comes uh, above the fence. So I believe it's authentic. Uh, and well, uh, the, like so, you said, there's yeah. a different there's a difference between the video being authentic, right, and what it actually shows. Because Ben, there's this researcher in Britain who agrees that the video hasn't been edited, but he thinks he knows what caused this shadow. That it might be from the flashlight. Let's listen to what he had to say. Well, let's rotate him a little, and we we do actually see the torch. From our camera position, we can just see it about here, can't we? We can just see it over his right shoulder. But the closer he is to the uh, fence post, the quicker that shadow will move from right to left. Now, Scott, I understand you mm. spoke to him. Uh, ben, I should say, I understand you spoke to him. Um, again, I, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's something not there, but do you think the shadow was just caused by the flashlight, Ben? Yeah, I wanted to say uh, congratulations, Scott and, and uh, Finn, because a lot of people don't take the time to do this, and we have confirmed it's there. There's something there. But yeah. as you look at this analysis, the shadow and the light he's holding is casting through the slats of the gate, and the smudging that's appeared, I do believe, is a confirmation of the video because you don't have lighting up by the tree. So um, it doesn't mean, again, that what they were seeing in the backyard is, is something completely, totally different. They reacted to something. But I do believe what we're seeing near the fence is, in effect, caused by that shadow cast through the sides of the fence there. And when he moves, 
Uh, it, 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 he recreated it in a software program that I'm convinced it's explainable. Well, that is very interesting. I have not seen that video, and now I want to go and find it and watch it again, or maybe I'll just rewind it on that. But if that is actually real, and there was two things, what were they? Huh. I mean, maybe, and and this is just going to be another wacky thing, but maybe. I was talking to somebody else today, and they were saying that what if, they, if aliens showed up on the planet, however many thousands of years ago, or we came from Mars, maybe, and then we come down here, or the aliens come down, And then they find the chimps, and they mate with a chimp. And they make a hybrid, which is us, right? And they make the hybrid. They grow the hybrid. They make the hybrid have more, right? And then they go, okay, we got them started. Let's see where they go. And then they all fly away. Do whatever, and they leave us to our own, and here we are 20,000 years in the future, and they're like, man, these ape hybrids are insane. They're literally trying to blow themselves up. They're fighting over everything. They're not taking care of their own. Like, these things have gotten way, way, way out of hand, although I do have to say that they built some really cool shit. What if those aliens that we are seeing, not in this video per se, but in general, the UFOs coming down, the the aliens, all the stuff happening right now, our government finally telling us that the aliens are real, which makes me think that they're not. Um, What if they're just constantly checking up on us now because they feel like they're hybrid project is going sideways and we're not on the path that they wanted us to be on but they were like hey this is a cool experiment (laughs) i mean there's so many ideas out there right there's so many things that you can look at and perceive and go i wonder if and you can make it sound plausible not that it is but kind of fun to think about right We either came from Mars and took over this planet or aliens came down to this planet and we came out from the aliens and a chimp as a hybrid. So I don't know, but really fun. Really, really fun. That's an interesting video. I'm going to have to watch more on that. All right. This one is crazy. So this um, Manchester man was arrested for allegedly shooting a gun near a homeless encampment. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't like looking at the homeless. I don't like the encampments. I don't like the needles and the trash that they bring. There's areas in Manchester, New Hampshire today that you should not go to. You don't want to be anywhere near those encampments. It's Nothing's good happening over there. Um, they ruin everything, they throw their trash everywhere, they shit and piss wherever they want, um, and they don't care about cleaning anything up. And it's just, it's it's really disgusting and sad and disturbing. But I'm not going to go shoot a gun at them. Uh, it's getting worse and worse. People are treating the homeless like, like they're, they're nobody. Those are the words of a man who's experienced homelessness before. He didn't want to be identified, but he shared that he was shocked to hear that on Saturday night, a man fired a gun toward a homeless encampment in the woods off 293 in Manchester. I don't think it's right that someone's up here. I'm glad they got caught. Police say that man, 47-year-old Adam Rousseau, lives up the hill on Coolidge Ave. And according to neighbors who heard the shots go off, his house overlooks the encampment. After the third or fourth one, I was like, oh, okay, it's definitely gunshots. A man who works at the gas station yeah. near the encampment says he heard the pops too. I've seen uh, police officers come and they were looking for shell casings. No one was heard, but Rousseau was arrested and charged with six counts of reckless conduct. 
something that came as a surprise to some neighbors who say Rousseau has always been friendly. Never actually had any problems with them either. Like, their cords always say hi to them. It's still not clear what caused Rousseau to allegedly fire the gun off in the first place. And while some neighbors admit they've been frustrated by the homeless encampment that's been there for months, many say it doesn't sit right with them to threaten anyone. They just keep getting pushed out of where they're at. They're just trying to find a place to exist and get back on their feet. Like, you know, like, I feel like it's... It's the wrong way to go about it, yeah. It's definitely the wrong way to go about it, right? And I can understand what he's saying. Yes, they are trying to probably get back up on their feet. They're probably trying to, you know, better their lives. But I don't believe that. I do believe that the majority of homeless are homeless because they want to be homeless. Because they don't want to go into the things that we have provided for them because then they would have to be sober and off drugs and da 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 da. And there's other treatment centers. There, there's other places, uh, shelters you can go to. Not all of them. You have to get off of drugs in order to go to them. So there are more options. There was a jail or something that I just saw that's been shut down that's being turned into a homeless uh, shelter. So we are trying to find places for them, um, but they don't always want that. Now, the people that you see homeless today, I don't believe are the same homeless we used to see before 2019. I do believe that the homeless that we see today is a completely different breed of people. It's people that have been fucked over, forgotten about, and left with nothing. Um, there are people that had their businesses closed. There's people that, uh, you know, wouldn't get the shot, so they lost their job. There's people out there for many, many, many more reasons today than just somebody being homeless um, because they couldn't get their shit together. It's so much more, and I do believe that the population of the homeless has doubled almost everywhere across the country, and that is because of the way our government dealt with COVID, period. So when he says there's people out there that are trying to get back on their feet, they're just trying to find a place to kind of call home so that they can start collectively fixing their lives, I believe that statement to be more true today than it was before 2019. Um, but at the end of the day, you can't go shooting guns at these people. Like, I understand not wanting to see an eyesore when I look out my windows. I get that. But I still wouldn't go shoot my gun at them. I would probably just call the city over and over and over again, like I do for the road, like I do for the streetlight, like I do for everything because I pay my taxes, and that's what I'm paying my taxes for. So, therefore, it's not a nuisance to call your uh, town hall and, and put in a complaint. The more people that put in complaints, sometimes the faster things happen, right? Um, small example. Uh, trash didn't pick up on my side of the street. I thought it was just me and my one neighbor. I called. I said something. The next day, I went out, and I noticed that it was the entire street. There was like 17 trash cans that were missed. So I called waste management again. And I was like, what's going on? And they were like, we are well of we, 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 we are well aware of the situation, sir. We are well aware of the situation. We're taking care of it. And I'm like, oh, obviously more than just me called, right? You know what I mean? So when you keep hounding them, right, and everybody's calling them, they get to a point where they don't want to hear anymore. And they just do something. So if that guy really didn't want to see those people anymore. He should have just rallied the neighbors, made a bunch of phone calls, and let the city figure it out because that's what we pay our taxes for. So you should utilize the money that you put into your city and let the city clean up the fucking mess. Right? I think so. This one here is wild, everybody. So a man's body dragged into woods by bear after deadly crash on Mass Highway, state police say. So, uh, state police say 31-year-old Daniel Duchemer of South Haley was found deceased by troopers outside of his vehicle at 11 a.m. Sunday in the woods. Off of Route 91 southbound near 30.8-mile marker, Duchemer's heavily damaged 2016 was located a short distance 
He was going too fast on the highway, hit the guardrail a couple of times, and then careened off the roadway down an embankment, striking several trees. <laughs> this is so wild. Police uh, alleged Duchemir was killed due to the crash, became par- partially or fully ejected from the car. Following the crash, Duchemir's body was allegedly dragged from the car by a bear. Evidence suggests the bear at some point had made contact with the victim's body, probably the claw marks and the teeth marks, right? Um, The state of the crash is still under investigation, um, and the body was left alone. So So the bear... The bear reportedly fled the area while responders were on scene. So the so this guy crashes his car, gets ejected or partially ejected from the vehicle, and a bear is just nearby, and he's like, eh, free food. So he goes over, grabs the body, and just, like, drags it out, and then when all the responders show up, he's like, oh, I gotta go. I'm surprised he didn't latch on to that thing and just drag it away you know but that's wild huh imagine that you get into a car wreck you kill yourself and then a bear tries to eat some lunch i mean just wild everybody uh on that note everybody i want to say uh thank you as always to all of my subscribers remember if you're new to subscribe if you want to be a guest tell your story or get some merchandise t-a-l-k-i-n with Topher at gmail.com is the official email of the podcast and of course the link tree is in the uh, video description below so go and click that and you'll find everything twt and i hope everybody out there enjoys the rest of your thursday enjoy your weekend and i will talk to you later